Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Invitational on Meticulous Talks. I am, again, Chris Accords, and this week my guest is... Grandpa's. Grandpa's was, of course, a uh, competitor during the tournament, unfortunately knocked out in his match against Josh. But that means now he's free to come here and help us out with the commentary. That's exactly right. And this week's matchup is, well, all the way down on the other side of the bracket. Uh, our, I, I honestly can't even really go on on his list of achievements already. Emperor Bugle, you know him from winning plenty of tournaments. Uh, and another relatively storied player, Pancake. Goes by a variety of names. Pancake is one most commonly in the community. Known as a... Uh, well, one of the last few devotees to the farming style. Yes, indeed. And he brought quite a few of that. It kind of proved it with his uh, decklist submissions for this tournament. Yeah, both of these players have uh, definitely built their decks to play to their strengths in addition to playing the overall meta. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of... Uh, well, first, just in case we have anyone here who's new to the event, uh, who hasn't seen any of our streams before, a quick rundown of what the format's going to look like. Uh, today's match is a best of three, where the first match will be core, second match will be harmony, and the third match, as needed, will be a coin flip between the two. Both of the players brought two decks in each of the formats. In each of games one and two, they'll choose which deck they want to play. In game three, they'll play the list that they didn't play in the prior format game. And it is a two hour, 45 minute time limit over the whole thing, played according to tier three-ish. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at these deck lists. And let's start with Bugles. Uh, Bugle opted for the Seleno, uh, yellow, Combo-ish kind of thing. Opening game. So we've seen Seleno decks like this have a pretty good degree of success. Um, I believe his most recent tournament record prior to this one involved a top eight finish in the online con uh, Nontinentals event. I believe that's correct, yeah. And the basic key of what's going on here is trying to find as many methods of jamming point acceleration into yellow and blue, which are very efficient, very aggressive colors, um, as you can. And in different ways that are uh, perhaps less difficult to disrupt. Seleno, of course, being the main with the focus on this. Leno bringing back, well, using various methods to bring back multiple copies of the Tempest Shadow Troublemaker and flip repeatedly for those two points each time. Right. In addition to the three Tempest Shadows that are here, there are also three copies of Guard Geese Sound the Alarm, which can allow you to get additional uses out of them. And to supplement that, uh, in addition to the Grogars to find the Tempests, you've also got the th uh, two copies of Trihorn Bunya. That's a lot of point gain. It can go very fast when it starts rolling. Combine this with other efficient aggro cards like Cloud Chaser and Flitter Philly Racers, um, two on the team. Efficient two cost, two power friends like Terramar or Thunderlane who can either move cheaply or move quickly. And of course, Plushy Dash, because if you're playing blue, you're probably running three of those. Very true. And if you're playing yellow, you're probably running Meadowbrooks as well. Yeah, very true. For what it's worth. Not, to met not to mention the pair of Yonos in there, and that kind of brings us to the disruption in this list. Only one unsatisfactory work, which does make sense, given that uh, there's not necessarily a guarantee that he's going to have Pegasi out at any given point in time. But he might. It's also an off-color disruption event. 
stop fighting, Sapokli attack, giving some nice immediate speed fragments, and of course the Yonas for uh, bouncing high power characters and the Kind Ponies for getting entry and bouncing low power characters. All in all, well-rounded. And yep. we expect that against a farming opponent, uh, well, you'll be getting good use out of those Grogars to knock off opposing epics. Otherwise, just trying to go fast. Yep, those Meadowbrook's masks are also likely to be relevant in a farming archetype, so... Or in a farming meta, rather. Good as well. And speaking of, let's take a look at Pancakes List. Sure. So, same main. Uh, be a little interesting. These decks will look similar off the start, perhaps, but we'll start playing very differently afterwards. Sure, compared to Bugle's wide suite of friends, we're looking at only nine total friends, um, or friend cards, rather, in this list. Mm -hmm. Just Plushy Dash, Daybreaker, and Raptor Rager. Which are all excellent friends, especially for winning face-offs and against troublemakers. Oh, no doubt. The event suite uh, not only provides additional utility in face-offs when Penke is likely to be using Seleno to challenge a lot of his epic troublemakers, but they also give him uh, a nice high flip average and some key disruption. Stop fighting Sapokli, very nice. Um, turning point in being able to get rid of opposing Grogars and potentially even get some value out of them that way. Mm -hmm. Join the Herd and Dramatic Entrance primarily as face-off tricks, but Join the Herd is serving as uh, one of the methods of entry into yellow for the Friends Are Always There or the Raptor Razor, or Spooky Runes for that matter. Or Spooky Runes, indeed. And then the epics that you would expect a deck like this to run. Three Queen Chrysalis, three Storm King, three Pony of Shadows, three Grogar. Plus those Tempest Shadows for the self-same synergy as Bugle's trying to run. Exactly. When you're there in a farm list, um, your point gain is slightly less conventional than a regular aggro deck. And players are going to expect when you're playing a troublemaker that the majority of the time it's going to be an epic and they're going to need to be prepared to challenge it. Won't they be surprised when it actually just says pay two AT, gain two points? Absolutely. So, with those covered, let's perhaps take a look at the game at the game. Let's get to it. There is one thing I want to mention on his deck before we go over there, and it has to do with a lot of his immediate speed removal that is here, and a, an interesting problem inclusion. Um, normally, farm doesn't want to try to push for the face-offs too hard, so running high bonus problems can be a little risky, especially against opposing aggro lists. But moving up does say when you <laughs> frighten a friend for the first time each turn, you may move one of your characters, and he has five pieces of immediate speed frighten with Sapokli and Stop Fighting, not to mention the Grogars, which have Villain. Mm -hmm. That means that if that problem is in play and he does manage to get a Frighten, he can move his main from home up to a problem at immediate speed where he has an Epic and challenge it when he otherwise wouldn't be able to. Not to mention his three staffs as well. Yep. Not as quick on the timing, but still another method of doing it. Very good. All right. Points. Okay, yeah, let's get to it. Take two and pass. All right, so we are right. getting right into it. Opening hands. Fairly reasonable for both players, I think. Mm -hmm. Both have their entry into yellow. Uh, Pancake in the form of motivational speech, Bugle in the form of either Professor of Kindness or Thunderlane. And it is worth noting that where the majority of, in fact, the entirety of Pancake's entry is in the form of resources or events, uh, Bugle actually has no resource or event-based entry. All of his entry is friend-based. Hmm. 
It's an interesting way to do it. You think? It, it, go ahead. It guarantees that when he draws a piece of entry, it's never a truly dead card in his hand. Worst case scenario, it's two AT for two more power. Right click. And if he's fighting for every point he can get, that's a good way to have some additional consistency. Yep, makes sense. Uh, Sundial flipping first and drawing first blood, as it were. I will play a troublemaker. Yours. Uh, pay, pay one for that. Go up. Yeah, flipping a Seleno against another Seleno is a bit of an interesting proposition because you're giving up the AT advantage for sure. Uh, your opponent can flip uh, on their next turn if they so choose, and you gain no additional benefit from it than if you had just flipped your own main. So you're basically giving your opponent an AT. I want to lag behind. Your turn. Yes. Allowing them to overcome their downside. Eagle answers right back with... Uh... Pretty much the same play, flipping his main and playing a Grogar. Yeah, the Grogar battles in this match are uh, sure to be interesting. That is true. Uh, Eagle, I think one of the players who understands the card pretty well. Uh, and all the various tricks yep. you can do with that. Sorry. Uh, I'm in deep thought process mode. It's Grogar! Yay. And it is likely to be very important as an as a way to get rid of opposing oh, epics and such. Phase. Yep. Motivational. Uh -oh. And it looks like he's gonna be going for a raptor razor here, which makes sense. That's a lot of power and a lot of bodies at that problem. <laughs> the question is, are we going to see ooh Okay here? Targeting Grogar and grabbing. I would go ahead and just put the die on it to count how many. Yeah. So this will be interesting to see how he sets up his tokens. Hmm. More over there means Crap. no more possibility uh, to fight you... Grogar with it. Okay. There you go. Okay. So this is this is probably the move that makes the most sense. It gives him at least one friend at each problem. Ooh. That's your own Grogar, I'm screwed. And exactly, he recognizes the risk in placing all of those tokens at a problem with a face-down troublemaker that he knows very well could be a Grogar. Play a, a, a troublemaker, you'll probably have what wanted to respond with your own Grogar. Damn it. All right. Makes the correct call. I will do yep. that. Okay. I'll pass to you. Game three. Draw a card. There's that mask. Okay. Ooh, that's a good draw. <laughs> Pancake's got so the answer good. to it in his hand, but you got to play to your outs, so. Uh... And Beagle definitely has the AT to play it. In fact, what he could do if he wanted is get rid of Pancake's entry with a Brian uh, to make it less likely that he'll have the resource removal for it. He's got two of those Brian's in his hand. He might as well. Mm -hmm. Yellow entry, Brian. Nice. Yep. Let's pay two for Fluttershy. One for a mask. Yep. It's like those masks you were talking about yesterday. Um, Chica. Okay, I think that's it for me. Okay. I'll still leave the speech in play. Okay. And that makes sense. There are more threatening resources than yellow entry right now. Okay. Um, he could be facing down a staff or a Flash Magnus' shield, and so he may just want to save his removal for that. Shield is a much more threatening resource than speech. It's kind of... I will move to face off against Grogar. Okay. All right, seven versus seven. Got a pretty good chance. I flip average Perfect. Deck. Yep. Exactly what I needed to flip here. <laughs> Any response? No. Okay. So Pancake moves up to four points. Two 
soon to be five. That's where the discard pile is for some reason. Okay. It's marked on your. Yeah. Um. Off to a good start. There's an argument here for playing the Daybreaker, um, but I don't think that's correct because Bugle will just get rid of the Grogar. He will do that right now, by looks of it. Pulling out uh, another Grogar, I assume. I suppose that's something that we neglected to think about is uh, getting rid of the speech wouldn't have actually gotten rid of his yellow entry. He's got seven of those tokens in play. That's right. He was pointing that out to us. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty strong telegraphing of a Grogar that has just been found. Uh, that is a chrysalis, I believe. Correct. Played on the assumption that Eagle might maybe move his main over and try to fight it. More Grogars. Well, he's got the epic in hand. He's going to play it somewhere. He's not going to play it to the location where he expects his opponent's epic to flip before his. So. I forgot that it doesn't have enough shuffle on tabletops. Good thing I didn't draw any cards. I move to confront Mystery Hope, uh, Hope Hollow. Uh, you may confront Mystery Hope Hollow. Yeah, banking the two seems correct here. There's not a lot of other value that can be gained this turn from that. Draw one. There is perhaps an argument for having yes. played the Tempest here. Since you knew you weren't going to be challenging with Seleno, you could have played it to the same problem with the Chrissy, flipped it first, um, and gotten the points that way. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, two to move. One for a Brian. And here's a Brian, which now that the critters are gone, makes sense. Brian. Yep. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know doesn't know about the join the herd, but well, he does still have a frightened raptor razor there. Mm -hmm. But frightened raptor razor isn't enough for friends who are always there. And he doesn't have any additional small yellow bodies, so. Where am I fine here? Hold on. More importantly, I did take out a significant chunk of power there at that problem, so Storm King or Pony of Shadows would not have uh, would have gone down much easier with those seven tokens there. Good point. Yes. Uh, score phase. Yep. Front for one. I think we'll pay. Over here, your turn. All right. Luckily for Pancake, you will not having the most aggressive of draws. No, three of his troublemakers, and hasn't really been able to uh, sequence those mimics in good enough timing to tax uh, Pancake's own troublemakers. With those Grogars, able to keep Pancake's Epics off the field. Yep. Hmm. So this could be... This could be a chance to play Daybreaker if he wanted. And basically force Bugle to use the Grogar if he ends up ahead in the face-off. In main phase. Alternatively, he can rely on his main. Oh, oh he's going to unfrighten the Raptor Razor. Interesting. Uh, that'll get him, yeah, to the other Raptor Razor, I guess. Oh, yeah, there you go. That'll do it. That is a threat to Grogar. Well, see. depending on where it was. Does it, does it just have a delay on it? Uh, yeah, I think so.
Yeah, and that's a pretty good split. Um, he could give the option for Beagle to use a single piece of disruption to stop the confront, but that's not the sort of game that Beagle wants to play with his Frighten. Okay. Uh, if he did have a stop fighting, if he left any of those in, then this would probably be one of the better times to use it. Move to confront mystery at Hope Hall. But Sapokli yep. and Unsatisfactory are going to be much better utilized against a Daybreaker, Plushy Dash, that sort of a thing. Absolutely. Hey, uh, your, your brain forced me to unfrighten my other one, so... Yeah, yeah. Hmm. This is not great. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and banish Grogar. Yep, it's a lot of value he can get by frightening everything there this turn. And it's unlikely to be a better opportunity later in this game. No CC and flitters, no bunyips. Oh, this is bad. And he's about to lose his yellow entry. Temporarily. Uh, uncover. Uh, oh, never mind. That's right. That's Pancake's triple maker with the other problem. And it's a chrysalis. Yes. I didn't see where he put the new Grogar. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, you probably don't want to kind pony the Raptor Razor. Probably wouldn't <laughs> recommend that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another troublemaker off the top. And just a really clunky hand. Well, let's do one more. Okay. That one's a bit better. Yep. Not by much. Not with the uh, mask still in play. That's Storm King or Pony of Shadows. Hmm. Regardless of what Beagle chooses to do here, I have to expect at the end of his turn that he's going to banish the Grogar and uh, put it over at Mystery. That would make sense. Save an AT for that. Yeah. What else? What else is even worth doing? No real space on the problems for Troublemaker. No, there's not a whole lot going on here that's... You know, his, his hand is pretty dead. Lots of entry cards, and obviously a ton of Troublemakers, but... It's not really the situation you want to draw those TMs in. Oh, jeez. I don't know. To be fair, I've, I've done well to put you in a difficult position, too. Uh, trust me, this is, it would be hard to draw worse than this. Possible, but hard. Uh, um, I think we're going to go ahead and pay one. Put a troll maker here. 
That pretty much and go to score first. proves that he's going to yep. move that Grogar out of there. Oh, yeah. Great. Boost card, Thunderlane. Yep, dropping the Thunderlane makes sense. Your turn. Did not take In it. Interesting. It is Chrysalis. Okay. Well, he doesn't get punished for it. Expecting that to actually be Chrysalis and shove your own stuff back like that. Uh, well, when I put it down, all there was was a frightened raptor. <laughs> yeah, but um, you put tokens and Celestia there. I don't know. Yeah, because you were going to frighten them over at Hope Hollow. It caused some tension. Meanwhile, Pancake draws his third raptor razor. Okay. Troublemaker phase. Yeah, it's a difficult card for... Or decks that primarily rely on single friend Grogar self disruption to deal with and then i will banish your grogar um so how do i grab a card uh it'll the... be face down by default so just drag right. it out it's very handy that way. Yeah, it sure is. Would be nice if it also did so when you dragged it out of your hand. Okay. Also, you haven't paid for that. That's uh, a fair point, yeah. Thank you. Now, this is a little bit of a pickle. Um, as with those two AT being spent, Pancake doesn't have a great option for setting up to challenge either of these troublemakers. Uh, yeah, can't play either of his big right. friends. And wants to leave his disruption open. Uh, on cover, I'll choose my main. I'm sure you're shocked. I'll just go ahead and put her right back and Main yeah. phase, assuming you don't do anything before then. Nope. Um, yeah, as Bugle points out uh, in the chat, another turn. Another flat yellow off the top. Uh, no, not end turn. Uh, main phase still. Um, I'll put this Troublemaker here. Yep, makes sense. Get rid of Chrysalis with Grogar, eventually banish Grogar, have another Tempest flip face up. Uh, <laughs> end turn. We'll put Grogar over here. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Let's at least do something with his Tempest. Yeah. It's just okay. a shame that he hasn't even drawn any of the geese to get additional uses out of them. So, yeah, if you're Pancake, you know that that Grogar is going to go away and get replaced by something else. Uh, you can play to your own... So next turn, you're always banishing Grogar. Plenty of Shadows, I guess. Well, so that Grogar is unlikely to go away until it absolutely has to. Um, Bugle would really rather leave the Grogar in play and be able to cycle between that one and the one in his banished pile as, or one of the ones in his banished pile as often as possible as a counter to any epic that Pancake manages to get face up. Hmm. Are you kidding me? <laughs> God, I wish I could be drawing as well as you right now. And he knows that Bugle has no more epics in his uh, in his deck, and no more Grogars for that matter. So the ability to frighten has 
well, frightened, significant uh, amounts of friends has gone away. Now he can still deny Pancake um, any points by choosing to banish that Grogar after the start of Pancake's uncover step when his troublemaker would normally uncover, but before he would move to the challenge step so that there are no face-up troublemakers to challenge. Look, it's not a good deck, so I know how to take on any weakness I have. <laughs> Give me the worst drawing luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's your own dang fault. I just know how to abuse the fact. Oh my god. Uh, let's pay to draw. Like, my hand... Wow, okay. Um, that... Sensibly will matter at some point. That is something. Bad chaser footer. Wait, why did I do that right now? Um... Now, kind of the tricky thing here for Bugle when I is, my I mean, my it's accurate to say that he has not been drawing well this game. <laughs> But at this point in this situation, there aren't even really any great draws for him left. Fine. He's having to play the epic wars with Grogar and anything that Pancake puts face, face up. Pancake has more than enough of his entry in play that he won't be able to play a color denial game. He's already got the, the mask in play, which is one of his better disruptive tools if Pancake wants to rely on staff. And uh, Seleno, of course. Yeah, I believe we will... He's used his Tempests... And Two of them, anyway. Crowbar over here. And Bunyip is guess I could do it now. going to require additional AT investment to move other characters up to confront. Uh, so discard. Two drawing is fine, but it's just there aren't okay. that many great cards in his deck for the board state at this point in time. Hmm. Good point. Yeah. This is the kind of board state where you'd want to triple raptor racer when all I'm drawing is entry. School shut down or a cabajack or something, but well, those aren't doing this yet. Right. Uh, this is the kind of game where you'd really like that Grogar's Lair card from New Dawn, but it's not out yet, so. And then I will banish Grogar. I didn't absolutely intend to give you ways to plug the new set, by the way. I expected you would. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll jam it in at any chance I get. Fancy. It's been a bit of a strange game so far. Yep, you can come uh, for a point. Wouldn't say Pancake's been doing a whole lot of farming, and Google has not been aggroing very well. I actually do something. Mm -hmm. Pancake's beaten two troublemakers so far. His other point came from. Ah, uh, confront. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want it on record. I've drawn six entry now. <sighs> Troublemaker face. Oop. I too would I'll like it on record me. that I've drawn three raptor racers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which of those is better. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Hello. Credit to Vigo for keeping me close, at least. Well, he's been able to rely on Tempest for his uh, catch-up point gain, at least. And he's played, he's utilized his Grogar as well. But we have reached the point in this game where the momentum is visibly shifting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe what we do here is... So he needs a big play sooner rather than later. 
And that is not a handful of big plays at the moment. Not yet. The plushy dash can make a lot of things happen. Pay to turn my main back over. This is all this deck does, apparently. I mean, yes, but... I mean, you built it to do that. I don't know why you're complaining about it. <laughs> um... You're not going to play Seleno Yellow like Growing Confidence Blue. It's it's not going to happen. Let's go to end. No, uh, yeah, end step. We'll pay one. Put Grover here. Mm -hmm. And discard another Thunderlane. Go ahead. <laughs> wait, wait. There's Thunderlanes that aren't blue. Yeah. Thunder Lane's in three colors. Isn't that fun? I know. Sure. Okay. We'll start in the chat for anyone who knows the third one. For, whoops, I don't pay. Uh, Vanish Grogar. Oh, no, after you uncover. Sorry. Right. We're waiting for you to uncover. Oh, fancy. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's my thing. Yep. Good job, Prison. <laughs> I, it was so nice, I, I decided to, to grab it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I will move to... Yeah, yeah we are not letting you challenge. Just letting you... Letting you know. <laughs> uh, that, that's perfectly reasonable. Um, so Pancake spends 2 AT, goes up to 9, confronts goes up to 10. Yep. And Bugle is... Oh. Run out of ways to stop him. Yeah, I almost wonder if it would have been in Bugle's best interest to have played one of his mimics over to Mystery solely as a method of being able to bring Grogar back for another turn. Yep. Because they're sitting in his hand not doing anything else, and he's certainly not for want of AT right now. And yours. Okay. Game four. Draw, enter. But I guess he has the other troublemaker there with that problem. I didn't see that, so <laughs> that's fine. Turn my main over. <laughs> There's a lot of that in this game. I would be curious to find out exactly how many turns uh, Bugle has denied Pancake from being able to uh, uncover that troublemaker no. at mystery. Ooh, it's been a few. So yeah, Three I've, or four I've, at this point, I think. Six. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That, that counter is ticking up there. For eight. I guess you got to enjoy those, uh, those Grogar shenanigans while you can. And he can stop it again this turn. Mm-hmm. And if he sequences the mimics correctly, they turn after that and turn after that, too. Definitely doing this. Let's not even front. Um, okay, so you have three AT. That's lots of AT. Gotta agree with you there in the chat, Pancake. Uh, total over the course of this game, Tempest has scored something like twelve or fourteen points or something. Yeah, I think it's I think it's twelve at this point. <laughs> She's almost won a whole game all, all by herself. This is this is just so bad. Uh, what do we do here? We're both at ten points. Mm -hmm. I think I just lose. I think that's my game plan. Um, it's not the best game plan, if we're being honest. <laughs> but I, I think it's it. my game plan. So the fact that Bugle has this Apocalypse attack does give him an out to Page's most likely, or I'm sorry, I say Page's, Pancake's most likely line of play next turn, which is to 
play a plushy dash um, oh, hey, right at immediate now. speed after Bugle banishes the Grogar that he's likely to bring back <laughs> in order to move Daybreaker and something else over to the problem that has Bugle's face up Tempest right now. Which would give him the opportunity to score two points that way, um, and then likely DFO for the remaining uh, the three. Proceed to score phase. Looks like he's shooting for a single face off here, though. Well, he may just use the Sapakli now, then. Yeah, on Daybreaker. Pretty good target. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of going to have to. I'm at 11 points. Woo. Face off. Face off. Yeah. Uh, that's not a. Oh, good. A good card. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, does he? Does he even uh, still win if he fights Daybreaker? He will. No, but I think at this point he's more concerned about denying points. That's also a fair point. If Pancake had a single critter token, he'd be tied, assuming. Um, okay. uh, just off of that critter token in the staff flip. And oh, another... he lets it go. Interesting. Well, maybe he wants to see if uh, oh Pancake's going to use an immediate speed movement like Plushy Dash and surprise him by ruining one of those characters having moved uh, the Daybreaker, that is. Uh, it's kind of hard. Uh... Mm. And end turn. Yeah, that does make sense. Your turn. All right. I got to flip a troublemaker. <laughs> you flipped plenty of troublemakers. All right. I'm going to first mate. Sure. Yep. yep. I uh, will move to face off against Plenty of Shadows. Yep. Mm. Uh, I'm not even going to try and stop you. Like, you, you've won this game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I will concede. Okay. All right. I'm ready when. First game goes to Pancake with a pretty decent series of early game draws. And a really unfortunate draw from Bugle. Yep. But that is the best thing about best of threes. You can still win, even if that happens. And that's right. So we'll have to see if he can manage to pull it out yet. Moving to Harmony, what are we looking at for deck lists? All right, give me a second to keep these up. Uh, let's go to Bugle's. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a guess and say I think I know which one he might be choosing. Well, share, the, share your guess with the class. Well, I hear purple's pretty good against a lot of farm. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say Ambassador of Friendship. You would be correct. I'm shocked. Oh so yeah, here we go. Uh, Ambassador Twilight Inc. And a little bit of white in there. Oh. Kind of old school, actually. Purple. Uh huh. All right. So where do we want to start with this? Um, this is the deck, or very close to the deck. I don't know if he took the exact list that uh, Bugle refers to as Twihard, and it's easy to see why. With the lit, with the cards constructed as they are here, or the or the deck constructed out of the cards here. Um, it's capable of interacting with just about any situation the opponent can throw at you. You've got card advantage being provided through Rainbow Shine, Selena Blue, and Gyro. Um, some discard pile recursion off of um, Miss Main and Twilight Sparkle and Rarity Exposed. AT gain off of your main off of uh, Rainbow Shine, off of 
same day delivery. Plenty of removal uh, with the belly flops and the cutie pox outbreaks, which can be flipped. Destiny Drain to take down the most uh, threatening plays your opponent might have. Uh, Staff of Sconus, of course, also capable of frightening. And the most perfect suite of annoying troublemakers uh, that the game has ever seen. If only Nightmare Star was here to see this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nightmare Moon. Ah, yes. Very true. I guess of particular importance in a game against farm would be the crack in the cases as well, probably. Yep, cracking the case is going to be a great choice here. Uh, untested magic fireworks. Uh, the single option is something that he may consider leaving in, but I don't know if he actually will. Um, the belly flops here are less likely to be useful. Um, I mean, they'll do fine, but he probably wants to hold on to most of his friends. The cutie pox outbreaks, on the other hand, are going to be pretty impactful because... Playing against one of two farm lists, farm has a tendency to run big friends. So if you can get rid of those effectively for free and flip a four as well, it's some pretty good value. The Magicites as well, excellent flips. Uh-huh. So this is a match where Bugle is going to be looking for either Pinky Sense or Selena Blue pretty early on if he can, as both of those cards are going to allow him to do a decent amount of top deck setting to rely on his chaos effects. And surprise, surprise! Those are the same types of cards that allow him to also flip his main and get his whole AT and value engine going. We're not going to hear it because it was in the free game and I edited it out, but I think Pancake gave an excellent summary of this deck, uh, saying, why would you do this to people? This is Vinyl's Bag of Tricks version, not Vinyl point zero. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now, obviously, there are certain avenues that you can attack a control deck like this. Uh, Nightmare Star, as you talked about earlier on your stream today, does a great job of shutting down most of the repeated utility friends that are here. Selena Blue, Rainbow Shine, Mayor Mare. And while I don't believe that Pancake is running... Um, blindfold in any of his lists, I believe that his dash farm does run two copies of Magical Misfire, so some of the recursion that Bugle would rely on can potentially be disrupted that way. Yep. So those are likely to be uh, Pancake's best options if he goes with the dash farm. Well, I, I can tell you that he did go with the dash farm. Let's have a look. No, only two, well, six friends this time. The three on even grounds and the three Apple Jacks. And he's got a five power main this time, so Very makes good. sense. Uh, he did opt to run the, uh, the Big Macs in his other harmony list, or else I'm sure we would have seen them in here. Hmm. Well, maybe. He's not actually running the, um, the scope things out in this particular list, so just decided not to go that route, and that makes sense. So, this looks uh, like a Harmony Farm list with that Troublemaker suite. It does. There's a few interesting inclusions here that show that Pancake was definitely thinking about the control matchup, right? The Uneven Ground, of course, is uh, a card that not only can ruin combos day, but control likes to bank a lot of its AT. That's a card that can also be difficult for Bugle to deal with at immediate speed because the cutie pox outbreaks are only playable during a face-off and the belly flops are going to cost him a friend. The two most interesting cards I think here, uh, given this particular matchup, are actually the Steady Sessions and the Portal to Tartarus. So Pancake has recognized that Delaying his opponent's ability to exhaust his friends is one of his best avenues of attack, and Steady Session does exactly that. 
Portal to Tartarus is also going to allow Pancake to slowly but surely remove important cards from Bugle's discard pile to prevent him from bringing them back with Miss Main or Twilight Sparkle and Rarity. Or even being shuffled back into his deck if the board gets threatening enough that Pancake has to rely on a school shutdown. All very true. All right. Time for a matchup that I like to call the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. I think it's pretty clear which deck is which in that metaphor. Let's take a look. You are. Yeah, I'll keep. Okay. Uh, you guys may begin whenever you like. You have about two hours, five minutes. Yep. Need you right there. Okay. We are in no no shortage of time Purple. for these matches. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if Bugle mulliganed his hand or not, but this is interesting as he does not have a way to flip his main just based on the cards in his hand right now. Right. He Bugle. does, however, have entry through the rainbow shine. That's right. Bugle confirming in the chat that this was a mulligan. Okay. You don't get two starting problems. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am three colors now. Here we go. All right. Change. All right. Relatively Draw a common opener for Farm and Harmony. Pay two yep. Four. Rainbow Shine. Pass. This is actually not the worst place to be in. Uh, getting a Rainbow Shine at home when you know your opponent's playing farm means you're basically guaranteed to draw some cards if you can remember the trigger. <laughs> yep. Show me that glimmer, yeah. Oh boy, okay. Ooh. Uh, I will move the face off in plenty of shadow. I will draw a card. I will, it's, whoop, you know, I will toss around. That draw, very good for him. Yes, it was. To play an event. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Put that on top of my deck, flip my main. I don't even think he's going to shuffle his deck. Ready for yep. Makes sense. Wins him the face off. I've seen this coming. Okay. And just like that, he is, well, not set. Time to play your shape. He's in much better shape than he was just a moment ago. Oh, no. That Nightmare Star is, of course, as we said, one of the most important cards for Pancake. Mm -hmm. It's a little early to get one of those down, but uh, he does have an epic at the other problem, and if he can prevent Bugle from being able to play a Grogar or Mimics or Yellow Paris Sprite, then it may be worth it to try getting it out now. Make him fish for the white for the cracking. We'll keep that on top. Oh. Yep. Yeah. ET from Twilight. Uh, da -da -da -da. Pay one to draw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the same day will be useful defense next turn, I guess. Mm hmm. So that will mean he's got two of his same days at the bottom of his deck. Uh, true. Okay. But, of course, a way around that would be... If he just lets it shuffle, and I don't know if he will. This is a bit weird. I don't like playing this early, but we're going to play a staff. Mm -hmm. um, then I will end my turn. And at the start of your turn, I'm going to exhaust Rainbow Shine. So what does that staff accomplish? It's a good question. She's not gone yet. No, um, gone. <laughs> apart from just giving Twilight a significant amount of power, I suppose I that star. it <laughs> lets back to the pony of Bugle have an option 
preemptively of dealing with. I've got another troublemaker off. Hmm. Okay, I, suppose. I guess it gives him an avenue of starting a face off if. Pancake manages to get one of his few friends into play, so he can rely on some additional chaos effects. Hey, look, I'm winning. Yep. Uh, that's fair, I guess, yeah. That's really one of the only uses I can see for it. I'm ah, gonna... Beagle's saying he simply thought he was sure. over his hand limit. Ah, okay. Now comes the shield. Now comes the shield, sure thing. Also worth pointing out, Done? not that it isn't obvious that the players change their uh, their playmats. Google right. pointing out that right. this is the only playmat he plays with this deck. Meticulous, almost certainly to the top. Uh, yes. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's think about that for a second. So we'll have to see what this card is, but that Nightmare Star does mean that Bugle is not likely to be able to get rid of Flash Magnus' shield this turn, as he does not have a uh, cracking the case in his hand right now, and Mayor Mare is his only form of resource disruption. Draw a card. Well, playing, the other rainbow, playing the other Rainbow Shine to gain an additional card draw, though, um, might be valuable. That shield, uh, not super thrilled. To be honest, uh, I'd imagine not. Let's pay one to drop. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Well, Selena's is valuable. Card. Right. Not, not great yet. No. But one, good to but have. It, eventually. Okay. There you go. Uh, again, still something that you'd rather. Uh, see in conjunction with a pinky sense, so you can use it as just the chaos flip effect. But hey, if he can deny his opponent, he can deny his opponent. So it looks like he's basically acknowledged that Pancake's likely to beat this Pony of Shadows. Seems like it. Only got one AT left. He's not going to be playing that Magicite. Nope. Or wait, no, he is. Oh, the yeah. And exhaust the rainbow shines out. So yes, not gonna play. Discard a mimics, and it's your turn. I mean, as far as troublemakers go, that's one of the least threatening ones. Um, the worst case scenario for him is that a catajack comes into play, and he loses one of his rainbow shines. Yeah, not that bad. Oh, draws the same day again. Flip. Right, let's go with that instead. Yep. Uh, I'll move down. Oh, so the blind chaos flip. Uh, you have nine, I have eleven. Um, better lucky than good, I suppose. <laughs> yes, no. That worked, I guess. Wasn't how I was expecting that turn to play. But that is the beauty of. Uh, Rainbow Dash, he kind of gets to just keep coming at you and keep demanding that you have an answer. Eventually, Bugle will run out. Here Yours. Okay. Ready. Gain two. Meticulous one. Probably to the top. Yep, that's going on top. Are you kidding me? Did you even shuffle? Are those just two? Well, you put everything on top because of Twilight. Draw a card. Oh, yep. That's, yeah, that's going on top, though, yeah. Okay, so if we had to sequence this, okay. you're going makeover, cracking, Selena, um, draw a bunch of cards, same day, draw. Mm, I actually don't know. Maybe you don't use Selena yet. For wake up call. 
Oh yeah, might as well Maybe use the white from that. Cracking the case, nightmare star. Want to play Misfire now? Misfire now would, of course, be an awful um, play. And, and that the wake-up call is active. Cards in hand, yep. I will pass turn. And start up. I will exhaust a rainbow shine. Yep, no need to do both of them here. Because he knows he's just going to be playing the same day. Okay, does draw the misfire. Yes, I'm going to. He's got the barrel for entry if he needs it. Oh, and the trading traditions. Make you not misfire. The top. You know what? I will move to my main phase. Okay. Don't let him just give me more cards. I think he'd rather go five on five compared to five on seven, or rather nine on five compared to nine on seven. Oh, okay. Oh, makes sense. That's easy ones. I see how it is. There he's. Fine. Okay. Ready. Ready. Game two. Um, what this is, of course, going to do is allow um, Bugle's board to very quickly get out of control here, because I guarantee you Selena's dropping this turn. Card. Oh, and, this, and the pinky sense, too? Pay two for a sea pony. Yep. Everyone's favorite sea pony. Mm. I don't think she's everyone's favorite sea pony. I think there are a few people that... Uh, Aren't as fond of that card. And let's play Pinky Sense while we're at it. Yup. Running out of room. Now that is one of those must answer, uh, uh, must answer resources if he can. Uh, but the problem is, Bugle has redundancy between Pinky Sense and Selena. He can put those Magicites on top of his deck one of two different ways now. <laughs> and the Catajack's an interesting draw for him. That's starting to become. Uh, tempting. Mm hmm. Okay. I'll move to face off against Tyrek. Let's see. Okay, I will draw two cards first. Mm -hmm. mm, Gyro's pretty nice. Okay. Uh, Definitely don't want to flip them, so. about what on top of his deck. Okay. Be flipping Magicite, which makes a lot of sense. Yep. Uh -huh. It is still tied, though. Only tied. Yep. Any response? Nope. Ooh. Back up. Yep. Yes. Okay. And question is whether or not Beagle wants to use the other Rainbow Shine this turn for same day, and it looks like he elects not to. Uh. Yep. Yeah. Uh. So let's see. Start of turn. Um. I take. Uh. Hmm. Now, it seemed like for a while after after the set rotation happened and all the meticulous went away, like, I, I know people like me tried to build control. It's like, how do you do it? There's, there's no meticulous left anymore. How do you have surety? Uh, I think this answers really it pretty well. Of gaining anyway. uh, draw for, yeah, being able to gain card advantage and set the top two cards of your deck at immediate speed. 
on a two power body that makes it more difficult for your opponents to confront it's safe to say that uh, one of the cards on bugle side of the field is a little pushed staff right yeah totally definitely Actually, you could point to just about any card on that side of the field right now and make Fair the argument. Point, yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll use Selena right now. There we go. Okay. Finds a mare mare. Goodbye, shield. Yep. Judge, my opponent is beating me into a miserable pile of hopelessness. We're just beginning. Uh, Mare Mare? No! Exhaust Rainbow Shine? Okay. Play same day delivery. Put mm -hmm. that on top of my deck. I have lots of triggers. We'll reveal same day and uh, begin 18 shuffle of my deck. That's not how you shuffle. Uh, get an action token, exhaust, get an action token, exhaust, banish, shield. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, now I have 10 cards in hand. Okay. I think uh, if you're Pancake, you just have to save up for that Captain Jack now. Yeah, I think if he didn't have the Captain Jack in hand, I don't even know if it would be worth continuing to try to fight through the slog right now. Um, but because you do have that, there's at least a temporary reset in sight here. You're kind of hoping that your opponent just overcommits to the board. We're at end of turn, because this is a T3 environment. Uh, I will put that card on top due to Pinky Sun. And that card on top due to Pinky Sun. Now, of course, what this is... Uh, going to create is a situation in which if Bugle chooses to use his Rainbow Shine triggers, he's going to be drawing both of those cards. Hmm. Well, 5v5 is still, still something. It's payback for last game. <laughs> no doubt that Bugle is in a much better position than he was last game. Mm -hmm. What last game was you just drawing that? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> this game, I didn't draw that. This is you intentionally. So, if you're Bugle at this point in time, you feel confident about your position, uh, you've got multiple ways of setting your top deck at immediate speed, you've got all kinds of resource generation and card advantage, uh, I think you're primary goal at this point is just to start stockpiling as many AT as possible. You basically don't have to spend anything in order to ensure that Pancake isn't able to win a face-off for at least the next few turns here. And you also know that if you're Pancake, you're looking for that Catajack opportunity. So you want to be able to rebuild your board as quickly as possible after that presumably inevitably comes down. Or, failing that, 45 AT miss made to win. I mean, sure. Gotta win somehow. Unlike a regular tournament, there is no impending... Well, I mean, there is a time limit coming, but it's like 90 minutes away. That's You're right. not going to be able to win by one point. Uh, Bugle does bring up the point that, yeah, he's got a six-power main um, and the ability to control his top deck. 
that's one power more than what's there with Tirek, and given that he feels comfortable defending against Pancake's challenge, two AT or two points is two points and opens up a problem to be confronted. Also very true. It is your turn, right? Oh, you, you said you were done? Oh, I thought you were said I, you were thinking. Uh, oh, I'm no. sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're just banking and passing there? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd bank and pass I'm that. I'm going to exhaust your that shine at the end of your turn. Project might be coming up soon. To uh -huh. where are you? Draw a card. Ready? Yep. I don't know why it does that. Uh, okay. Um, meticulous. Well, I got game two. Meticulous. Right. The card I wanted to put on the bottom of my deck. Um, draw a card. This is his first new draw. Okay. Exhaust Rainbow Shine. Play Makeover into White. Mm -hmm. And we are starting the Miss Main Train here. Let's play Miss Main. Mm -hmm. Get back cracking the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll assume you're choosing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, first point. Uh, On the board. Points. Uh, pay one. Two. Play a troublemaker. Let's see. Uh, I think you go here, yeah. And pass turn. All right. You know what uh, Angelique's play is going to be? Mm-hmm. Okay. I move to main. Uh, it just goes right to his main phase. Exhaust Rainbow Shine. And uh, I will exhaust Selena Blue. Okay. Uh, let's put that on top. That on top. Reveal same day. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of interesting questions here as we look at the sequence of uh, the next few plays, which is, if you're Bugle, given your hand right now, do you choose to keep the Selena for the card advantage in top deck setting, or do you choose to keep the Mayor Mare because you fear something like a, a shield or a staff? And your interesting effect. question. I have no effects. Girl the hand. Sure. I, I, he, hmm, he does have answers still, I guess. Magic. Yep. In the form of like that mad decided yeah. hand. He's he, he's gonna keep uh, pinky senses if these orders can do. Keep Derek. Okay. We'll choose uh I believe I choose Pinky Sense and Selena here. Okay. Which almost guarantees the play from Pancake of Portal to Tartarus. Staff goes as well. And banish the uh, banish the Miss Main. And we'll have to see if that's what happens here. Play Portal to Tartarus. Portal. Okay. Oh, 
oh, that's right. Uh, portal only triggers when the card goes to the discovery line. Ah. Uh, so it may have been in his best interest to actually play that earlier mm -hmm. before he played the Catajack. Yes, yes, confront is fine. That does confront. Uh, okay, game two, ready. Yeah, Portal is actually a little unfortunate uh, in that because it is not a replacement modifier and it is a trigger, um, it can't actually interrupt the miss main cycling. Oh, because the game's doing it? No, not because the game's doing it, but because presumably the person who plays miss main, you know, is, right. is the one who is going to resolve their pre-priority yeah, triggers first. There's no window to, yeah. Right. So it'll go, well, it's not even a window. It's the fact that, sure, both are triggers that are put into the same PPP window, but you resolve turn player, non-turn player, and the turn player is going to have already gotten back their miss main by the time the Portal to Tartarus trigger is processed. Right. Um... It's one, the only reason why Cadence works is because she replaces that occurrence, which is faster than triggers. One for Gyro. Now everyone here say they learned something about triggers today. I feel like I get to have that conversation about once a week. <laughs> hey, triggers are complicated. Fair enough. Gyro for what? Here? In my hand oh. too. Okay. Um... Belly flop, perhaps? We'll find first. No, you're not going to be giving up any of those friends, and you don't have a. Well, I guess you've got the gyro if you needed it. Um, oh, wait, he's got a belly flop in his hand already. Uh, honestly, probably just the same day. He's got the cutie pox outbreak, so he'll just flip that, and that'll get rid of Catajack. Do we do this? I think we do. Um, Let me grab the fireworks. Okay, sure. Uh, no, he, he, he grabbed a magic site, actually. Oh, he grabbed a magic site. Okay. Did he not already have a Magisite? Oh, no, he did. He just wanted two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess there's no harm in doing that. Destiny Drain, Captain Jack. I'll concede. Okay. Okay. There we go. Alright, so game two goes to Bugle. And that means we are headed for our game three. Game three indeed. Was it core or was it harmony? Well, it was core. Okay, so we're actually going to see not a farm matchup for the first time. Uh, that is true. And King is going to be forced to play his only non-farming deck. Alright, let's check this up. Let's look at Bugle's first. Yep. Bugle with Thorax Orange. So let's take a little trip down memory lane for a second here. Okay. Sure. Several several months ago, um, yellow was dominant. Go figure. And in addition to all the cards it currently has, one of the cards that helped yellow just continue to push and push and push and apply consistent pressure and just break the action economy of the game was Day Shift. Every time one of your problems entered play, you got to move one of your characters from home to that problem. Obviously, this did silly things with growing confidence, but it also meant that if you relied on uh, relatively large bodies, single bodies like Thorax, for instance, or even just cards that could uh, get power boosts or provide power boosts to other, car to other cards there, uh, Day Shift was very stupid. It was effectively 4 AT every time a double problem face-off took place or a multi-problem face-off took place. 4 AT worth of value. Well, Day Shift is gone now. Thank goodness. Well, Thank goodness. However, there is another card that can provide similar, if not even greater, 
um, economy in this particular list, and that is Applejack and Fluttershy treading water. Now, by itself, the card might seem a little innocuous. It's a one power body, and it lets your small friends stick around at problems after a face off takes place. There's quotation marks around that small there. There is quote, yes. And that's exactly what this deck is trying to capitalize on. Because when Rock Hoof is capable of growing itself turn after turn, when Applejack, Professor of Honesty, can allow you to grow friends in the mid to late game, and more importantly, when Great Seedling allows you to distribute power counters across your friends as you see fit based on the 11 events that are here in your deck, those two power or two printed power or less can get really, really big. And suddenly a DFO happens and you're just ready to go again next turn. Exactly. With the exception of moving your main up to one of those problems to help you confront, um, you have basically spent no AT and invested no significant resources. What is even worse is that AJ and Fluttershy treading water prevent your friends from going home anywhere, not just where AJ and Fluttershy are. In fact, AJ and Fluttershy don't even have to be at a problem. If for some reason you're scared of... Epic troublemakers, villains, uh, frightening taking place, what, whatever it is. You can just plop them at home. And they do just as much good back there. So we've got a ton of AT savings and a board that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Defend the high for immediate speed movement on Thorax. Listen up to guarantee that your opponent's not going to do anything shifty in a crucial face-off and a problem deck with um, a couple high bonus options out there. This is a color combination that you don't usually see outside of Thorax right now, but boy does it work. Mm -hmm. Now what is it afraid of? Well, there's a few things that can be frustrating here, of course. Um, Bugles List has chosen not to run any copies of Brian. That means that if AJ and Fluttershy treading water um, receive the um, measured response appropriate to a card of their threat level, then you're going to have to rely on your other cards. Um, Great Seedling is probably the next most threatening, um, just because it is going to turn any friend that you put at a problem into... Um, a pretty significant threat, and Delivery Mare can also end up kind of breaking that economy like we were talking about. Limestone can be frustrating if you are playing against Reanimator um, just because it can shut off the power that Thorax gains, and it can also shut off AJ and Fluttershy if need be. Um, but with the Desert Roads, some... Removal in the form of unsatisfactory work. Anti-tricks with uh, Listen Up. I guess we really have to look and see what he's facing against to see what threats he's uh, going to be most concerned about. Oh, well, thank you for the segue. Let's have a look at uh, Pancake's deck then. So, here we have a little tricolor. Yellow, blue, and pink. My favorite tricolor. My favorite tricorn. Wonder why. I, 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 I was very happy seeing people unironically running Celestia in these deck lists. Maybe they were running it ironically and just not telling you. <laughs> Let me keep my dreams, please. All right, fine. So we've got a Nurturing Nature deck here. Again, uh, free confronts are, you know, kind of nice. Can't really blame someone for that. Unfortunately, only able to keep one staff, given that the three of them were in the other deck. True, but there's a decent number of small, cheap friends here that can really get a lot of benefit out of Treehouse of Harmony. So your power boosting is coming from that method. Uh, that and the three copies of It's Time to Be Awesome here. Not as many tokens as you might expect to see 
with um, a build focused around kind of power anthems like that. But that's honestly okay. Because Rainbow Dash, Snow Dash is very efficient. Party Mirror is very efficient. Um, Zephyr Breeze and a bunch of two-cost uh, friends can do some work. And Gabby's there to refill your hand if you've just kind of vomited everything out there on the table. I guess there are uh, three copies of Friendship Festival set up, which can make additional bodies that way. Celestia, in this case, is just an efficient, swift, big body that provides a little bit of protection. Unfortunately, that protection is not likely to be super relevant this game. Uh, with the exception of Staff of Sakanas, Bugle doesn't have any Frighten or Dismissing. As the unsatisfactory works, primarily. Right. Uh, Meadowbrooks, of course for some resource and troublemaker removal, in addition to the sanctuary construction. Uh, looks like there are only the two Meadowbrooks, as far as resource removal goes. Um, that's going to be a problem if Desert Road hits the field. Mm, that is the case, yeah. In fact, if we take a look at the deck here, we can see um, Professor of Laughter, Professor of Loyalty, Loyal Pony, Meadowbrook, the most impactful interest play cards. Um, thankfully, there are other cards here that can actually benefit or don't really care as much about the Desert Road. Zephyr Breeze loves it. <laughs> That's a fair point, yeah. And uh, Loyal Sea Pony is fine. It loses Swift the turn you play it, but it gets another friend back in your hand, and hey, it's a four-power body for two. The next turn it'll have Swift. That's relevant. So this is really going to come down to can Pancake get the opening that he needs to get his main flipped early and start relying on some of the efficient, uh, high-power, low-cost friends mm -hmm. before Bugle manages to get himself set up with a Treading Water or a, uh, a Great Seedling. That's, that's my guess. We're going to want to see Pancake playing cards fast and emptying his hand out. Yep. Have a chance. What do you think as the edge? Based on the fact that Pancake is running Nurturing Nature, but playing a three-color deck that relies very heavily on its friends for uh, entry into those other colors, and the fact that his only starting problem is Mystery at Hope Hollow, that means that the only way he could realistically do that by turn two is going to be if he has the holiday spirit and Bugle doesn't play a friend on turn one. That means that it's probably going to take him till turn three to flip his main and likely require an investment of six AT. Uh, and just based on how long I think that's going to take compared to uh, Bugle's starting problem opening, which is likely to be the buckball strategy. Uh, I'm going to give the edge to Bugle here because he can get off the ground uh, running. Makes sense. Uh, it is worth noting that unlike your game versus Josh, we are going to game three with uh, no time trouble at all. Plenty of time left on the clock. So it'll be uh, it'll be a play to fifteen, likely. All right. Let's yeah. Let's let's get to it. All right. Okay. Solid opener from Bugle. He's got um, Seedling, Entry into Orange, and at least one event. It looks like two events. Uh, however, also very solid opening from Pancake. He's got the Holiday Spirit, perhaps the most important friend he could have right now. And he is going first, as he lost game two. Oh, good. Yep. Um, let's see. Your turn. Okay. It looks like he is going to be able to get the turn two flip here, which is going to be fantastic for him. Uh, I will move Nurturing Nature. Okay. It is. All I swear. Sure. Holiday Spirit. Uh, move to confront. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, that's problem one solved. Well, issue one overcome, I guess you yes. could say. Uh, take two, draw for turn. Play Applejack. Sure. Move Florax, confront flip. Yep. Yep. Yeah. HA is a, a decent option here. Not a lot of uh, cheap, disruptive cards on Pancake side, so. At least not till you get past the eight point marker. Those Gabbies are a little dead in hand right now. Yeah. But they may be relevant later. Oh, we've got two of them. Ouch. Now it's probably worth exhausting Fluttershy to contribute to her own problem just to avoid any unwanted face-offs here. I I would agree. Yes. Um. Yeah. Thorax is a deck that can meet seven power pretty pretty easily. Mm hmm And it can happen unexpectedly with that defend the hive and view of hand off to confront for a point. Yep. Okay. Now what is interesting is that if Beagle does not play a friend this turn, um, which he's very likely to, um, Pancake could have actually gotten uh, Celestia out on his next turn. Mm hmm Dash into Celestia for three. Yeah. Correct. We'll have to see what happens, though. I'm expecting Rock Hoof. Hmm. Also, just like play Staff and Frighten Pinky, maybe? Well, that's an option. Interesting stuff here. Uh... Yeah, Staff Fright and Pinky, not a bad choice. He might be risking the threat of the, uh, the Meadowbrook. Mm -hmm. okay. But it looks like he is going to go with that line. Mm -hmm. One. Challenge Pinky. Right. I have nine. Yeah, that's more than enough. It was actually pretty close. Nine versus seven there. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. Pinky was shut off. She, there were no longer more friends. Oh, right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, nine versus five. So, pretty safe. Okay. Well, uh, Zephyr's not terrible. You could unfrighten the holiday spirit and play Zephyr in DFO. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. Oh no, no, you're, that won't no, that no, won't you're, quite work. You're one, you're one short, yeah. Hmm. Oh, that doesn't work like that crap. I think he was thinking of four. Mm hmm Yeah, it's the the plus two, the hidden plus two off a of buckball that won't let that happen. He could uh, do the DFO anyway, play or, or do the single problem face off anyway, do the Zephyr contribute Fluttershy over to that problem. Mm -hmm. Sends Beagle stuff home, does get you one deeper into Beagle's problem deck. It's risky, but it might force him to spend some AT. I don't know if it's worth doing it now versus saving the Zephyr for a later turn. Well, another Celestia is not going to do a whole heck of a lot. He is in excess of his hand limit now, so the Foff is likely to come down, and that's going to be a nice uh, free blue entry, most likely. Discard Fires of Friendship. Fair enough. Which will almost certainly vanish immediately next turn. More pink. Not blue. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Uh, ready. That is an interesting choice. Draw for turn. Perhaps planning on 
Be Pinky getting frightened again? Mm, it's possible. Trend your uh, fire friendship. Mm. Well, the valley trend draw also gets rid of the fire friendship, yes. And this could be another stick the holiday spirit, then drop the rock hoof. Pay one rock hoof. Uh huh. Pay one. Yeah. Challenge. Perfect. And enter uh, score phase. Yep. You got it. And that rock hoof is currently slated to get pretty big. Oh, yeah. We'll take some time, but there's a staff. I'm not going to do a whole lot right now. I mean, it will allow. Hmm. So if you play staff here, do you just take the free? Actually, I think that might be correct. Your opponent has just used one of their pieces of resource removal. You can play the staff. Um, I don't even know if you use the AT to frighten. <laughs> but you confront Buckball and move all the things away before the uh, treading water comes out. Hmm. That's, that's a fair point, yeah. Although staff is one of the few options that he has in his deck that can deal with treading water before eight points. So okay. we'll have to see. Oh. He is going to use it. Against Valley. Who's he using it on? My poor Valley trend. <laughs> okay, well, it won't be swift. And you got a treading water out of the way, so... Yeah. Oh my hey? god. Well, that's, well, uh, well, that's pretty good. Um... I do think... Move to confront for a point. Okay. He opts for the... Here's... Interesting. Other line. I I think I agree with you on the, the face off line. I show his total power. I think you've cut, you you risk nothing by losing the face off in terms of points, and you're just forcing either card or AT expenditure out of your opponent. Sure, the problem might be more threatening, but it's not like Bugle's set up to you know DFO next turn or even confront mystery. So you might as well take advantage of the window when it comes up. And there's a fun yep. Yeah. Dismiss your staff. Yeah, that staff was going to have a target on it no matter when it came out. And go to score phase. Mm -hmm. uh, confront for two. You got it. Your turn. And Kate telling us in the chat he was perhaps just a little burned out after that control match. Mm, can't Which, really blame him. Understand that. Yeah. I think we're aggroing wrong. Yeah. It is worth pointing out, I know he's here listening, that given the best of three environment, it was probably the correct play to concede relatively quickly out of that uh, slog. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself fresh and not uh, not too shooken up by the grind. And this is actually kind of showing one of the um, maybe deck building obstacles that Pancake may have created for himself in his list. Like, let's take a look at the cards he has in hand in it right now, right? We've got um, two copies of Gabby who are there to help you get cards back in your hand after you've played a lot of things out. But most of his friends cost two AT. That means early on he's not likely to be playing a lot of cards. He also has Snow Dash, who gets more power for having fewer cards in your hand, and Celestia, who 
is cheaper if you've put more cards into play, or if you have more friends, effectively, here, but is otherwise a five-power friend, or a five-cost friend in your hand. Right. So there's a little bit of a non-bow going on between a few of those cards there. Uh... The Friendship Festival setup is a good play here, though. Uh, because Bugle has not shown tremendous amounts of token generation and did just use one of his friends were always there to um, dismiss a resource. Bugle hits his uh, AJ and Fluttershy off the top, though. And with that staff gone, that's going to be difficult for Pancake to answer. The nice thing is, um, if Bugle does take the bait and go for the DFO here, uh, Pancake has the ability to play a Professor of Laughter next turn at the 8-point threshold. That is one way to answer Applejack and Fluttershy. I will play Treading Water over here. Mm -hmm. I think Bugle is going to go for it. Yeah, I think he'll just use the Defend the Hive. I'll proceed to score phase. You got it. Front for one. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yep. Pay one. Move thorax. Yep. Time to confront. Yep. Front for one. Face off. Okay. Okay. So this does give Pancake the opportunity to either find a Staff or a Fire of Friendship. Fire of Friendship could potentially let him play Celestia a little bit easier. Uh, but it still won't work for... Oh, no, it will. Oh, uh, he only has the one Staff. So... Oh, that's right. So this is likely to be Pinky? I actually don't know what he takes here. There's a lot of entry options. Oh, right, you're looking at your deck first. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were looking for the Earth Earthhunt tokens. No. Okay, you. yeah. Another piece of removal. I'm going to dismiss. Google knows fully well what he's going to get dismissed from his side. And then these flip. Yep. The point and where it's game three, resolved. and we realize right, this is the first time no. Pancake has replaced his problem. Like it's not a bad way, it's just a less efficient way. Really? Okay, fine. And then with Festival down, taking. Um, no, no, the wrong no. One. <laughs> I'd be a little scared. Yeah, no. Uh, tinker only. Look, I saw Pinky and went for it. <laughs> Whoops. I, I yeah. said copy, not the wind. Down. There. Pancake talking about how, hindsight being 2020, he probably would have played blue purple aggro instead. And that's fair. Blue purple aggro still has quite a few teeth, even after the loss of a few of the cards from uh, EO sure, block. And uh, seizing yet another opportunity to shamelessly plug New Dawn. I was about to say, we were talking about it just this morning. Uh huh. Lost at eight points, unfortunately. Oh, you go ahead, make the promo. I bet I got uh, your first two AT. Blue purple's likely to be pretty good in New Dawn. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. An excellent. Yeah, uh, it should be pretty obvious. Excellent stuff coming up for it. Get rid of the Apple Day. Okay, it turns out when your same day deliveries right. don't just say. Um, potentially gain an AT, but do say, oh, you know, move three of your friends from home or anywhere. Seems okay. At immediate speed. Yeah, I don't know if there's really a good, good comeback for that one, honestly. 
All right, so uh, with those five Earth Ponies, Pancake has a reasonably fair okay. path to DFO, at least. Uh, you don't have another blue friend. Yeah, I was going to say, you didn't, no blue character there, but that's okay. You've still got the 3 AT to be able to drop the Celestia if you want here. Now he's going to go for the Party Mare. Fancy. Uh, I will move at the start of my score phase. I'll exhaust Fluttershy. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, fine. hey, crack back for eight. The other mystery. Yep. yep. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, okay. And did it while those friends went home? Yep. Uh, I think at this point, uh, since you've got one of the other Professor of Laughters in your hand and Rockhoof's already out of control on that, you might just opt for the Loyal Pony, because that's a very efficient card. Let's see what he grabs. I'm going to say either Loyal Pony or Professor of Laughter. Professor of Loyalty. Interesting. Yeah, that is going to hit... Professor of Honesty. We can go on a field trip that everybody hates. Not a whole lot. It'll hit Professor of Honesty and other friends that end up coming down, but uh, it's not going to hit Rockhoof. I've made that mistake yeah, too many times. Of a home moment, yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep, keep one token. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, and one okay. bonus. I answer you in the chat. It, it's not just that it's got printed that. power, it's that yeah, Rockhoof can't be frightened. Oh. You went to five, six, seven, eight. Right, so I should be at eight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, years. Okay. The rock hoof will grow. Ready. And unfortunately for four Pancake right now, card for turn. Uh, four AT is enough. Uh, pretty sure that this turn just about is any just problems. Pay for yep. Rar. At this point, with hide bonus problems likely to arise, uh, yep. we're looking at probably one turn left here for him to answer. It is worth noting that um, this is not the only pink-blue-yellow deck that is uh, being run in core. Um, Eminently Sensible is also running a pink blue yellow deck, and it is also running Celestia. Uh, yeah. It, uh, they are just very different approaches to oh. that color combo for aggro. Right, you're at that stage. So I wouldn't discount yourself for, um, for playing these colors, Pancake. I think there's oh, okay. just, uh, other um, avenues of attack. So on a d20, what is it now? You want to do one... even odd? Well, she can move to. Is it problem or problem? Oh yeah, even odd. So yours is even minus odd. Sure. Even. Okay. I was a little bit sad that no one brought Poppy. The harmony. I well, I have to invite yeah. pages next year. You lost Vinyl and you lost Nightmare Moon. What are you going to do? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a fair point. You have on Sats in your deck. Yeah, that's true. Now, Bugle here, reminding your opponent of their possible outs, did not learn Hithrox's lesson from the, <laughs> uh, from the first. Don't remind your opponents of their possible outs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he is right. Draw for unsatisfactory is pretty much the only possibility. Yeah. Uh, unsatisfactory or uh, I'm the first, or uh, that one. But that Time one to be arrived. Awesome. One at too late, unfortunately. Sure, sure did. Would have been nice to hit that rock hoof there, but um... no. One draw short. All right. Close, but no cigar. I'll call game. You're calling it there. Yep. If I had one more AT, I could. It's time to be. Oh, off you could. Draw you could draw yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'll let you in on a secret. 
even if you had done that, my no. play would have been. Uh, oh no, no, I didn't have. An, I was one short for that too. Never mind. Uh, no, I. I, uh, I was. Oh yeah, because you wouldn't have been able to go to. Um, no. You wouldn't have had six for the. No, I, I overestimated. And I kind of seedling and that. friends were always there. Played, so which would have been the lie. Yeah. Yeah. It just says, guess who isn't playing in this tournament? I think I could have won this, but I just played it poorly in the beginning, because I had two high noons in my hand, and if I could just get a high noon going. And I had no removal for it, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the I mean, problem... I could have frightened it. Then uh, you could have put it into your hand. Yep. <laughs> I mean, not that that's really good for that one, but... <laughs> not especially. Uh, and that's yeah. that. Yep. So, I felt that those were uh, an enjoyable couple of games. Well, three games. Sure. Definitely got to see a few interesting deck strategies, right? We saw a couple aggro, saw a couple farm, saw a control in there, so mm -hmm. yeah. it hit several nice archetypes. Let's see, we covered... Uh, purple, pink, white, orange, blue, and yellow. So we got the full spectrum. What more can you ask for? Indeed. Well, I, I, if Hithrock was here, he'd say combo, I'm sure. Um, but he's not here. Well, I'll say it for you. Should have played some combo. Fair enough. There you go. Uh, yeah, so with that win... Uh, Bugle will advance to the semifinals where he will play against Max, our winner from last week. Yep. And that means we are on to the semifinals. There we uh, go. Semifinal from the other side is Josh, eminently sensible, versus uh... Hithrock. Hithrock, that's right. <laughs> yes. And we'll, well, I, I'm not sure which of those we'll be bringing to you next week, but one of them. That's going to be some intense competition, for sure. I think so. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for joining me, Grand Falls. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you to everyone who was watching. Mm -hmm. And congratulations to uh, Bugle and a well-fought match uh, to Pancake. Absolutely. Okay, so, yeah, again, thank you all for showing up. We'll be here again next week with the semifinals. Uh, until then... I've been Cursor Course. And I've been Grand Pulse. See ya. <laughs>